Good morning. It is a joy and a blessing to be in worship with you on this beautiful spring morning. Uh, whether you're joining us in person or online, welcome. We are glad that you are here. Speaking of being glad that you are here, we are also very glad that Carol is here with us today. Um, I'm sure many of you know her, recognize her. We are grateful to have her here with us while Maisie's on vacation. Um, also, this week we are starting up our new Bible study series looking at 1 Peter, because you will notice for this week and all the weeks of the Easter season, we will be reading from 1 Peter in worship. And so this gives us an opportunity to dive a little bit more deeply into what that book is all about, where the book came from, um, all of that. So that is Wednesdays at 7. If you prefer Zoom, uh, shoot the office an email. We'll get you on the weekly email for that. Um, also, next week, do not come to this building. We will not be here. Next week, we are over at Mars United Presbyterian on Crow Avenue. If you need directions, let me know. Um, their service starts at 10. So not only will we not be here, but it's later. This is next week. I'm saying this five million times because I am sure someone will be like, I would never heard of this. Um, so next week, April 23rd, youth-led worship at Mars United Presbyterian on Crow Avenue at 10 a.m. Got it? Wonderful. With that, uh, anything else that I need to be sharing? No? Wonderful. Let us take a moment then to quiet our hearts and minds for worship. Please stand as you're able. Now last week, by the end of the service, we figured out how to say this with a holy gusto, as my mentor always said. We're going to maintain that excitement all season long. So with that, hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, and by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Water. We praise you, O God, for water, for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. We praise you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture your whole creation. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Satisfy the world's need through this living water. 
Where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you in the Spirit reigns forever. Amen. Amen. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus. In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Let us come before the Lord singing Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy, trusting in God's abundant grace promised in these waters of life.
Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith in you and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from the book of Acts. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the, me the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from the book of Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, 
kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. The gospel according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put, in my, put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated, and would our younger worshipers come on up. I have a task for you. Everybody needs a piece of paper. Oops. Okay, just enough. It's magical. Because I just grabbed a random chunk. Okay, and everybody needs a crayon. Now what I would like you to do is you can turn around and use, just use the floor. I think that will work just fine. Okay, we'll give you one that will write better than that one. Um, is I would like you to take this paper and draw a map of this church. Just a nice simple map. No cheating. You can look at the building, but don't look at other people's papers.
take another 30 seconds or so. <laughs> Do you need a new crayon? Finish up what you're doing. And if you're not quite done, that is fine. I am sure you have enough that we can we can use. All right, so when you're done, hold up your crayon and I'll take your crayon. They're into details. Uh, I believe I saw someone counting the number of pews even. have people in the congregation here and labels oh and the basement all right we've got the outside Cut you guys off soon. <coughs> you done enough, Carissa? Oh, you got it. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. I hope you all are ready because this is a multiple person participation event here. Thank you, my dear. Can I have your crayon there, Eva? Thank you. Take your crayon, as broken as it might be. Thank you. All right, so now I would like you all to hold up your maps for them to see. Yeah, you're, you might need to stand up. The pews block people. So now all of you, I have a question for you. Do any two of these maps look the exact same? No, they are different. This one has some labels. This one, oh, this one's got the exit sign. Uh, this, this one's got like, the whole upstairs, downstairs, and the parking lot. This one's got, is that the downstairs down there? And the oh, this one's got the font, I see. Uh, floor one, this one's got the floors labeled, nice. Uh, and the outside, this one's got the people in it. This one's got the candles and everything, nice, and the piano, and this one's got the outside of the building. So today, in today's gospel, we had this guy named Thomas. And he said, looked at Jesus, and he said, my Lord and my God, right? And he believed that Jesus was God. Now, not everyone got to see Jesus like Thomas did. You guys can sit down. Um, but then, after that, Jesus says, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now, each of us, just like our maps, have a very different journey on how we come to believe in Jesus as Lord and God. We have different faith journeys, right? Sometimes we like to read and study. Sometimes we like to experience God in nature, sometimes in music, sometimes in other people. We all have different journeys that take us through faith and learning about God and learning about Jesus, learning about God's love, just like our maps. It's all a little bit different, but you know what? 
all your maps really show the same thing. They all show this church. Just like how we have different faith journeys, our different faith journeys all lead us to the same God, the same love, the same Jesus. Can you remember that God loves you very, very much? Can you remember that your faith journey is special to you? Can you remember that it leads you to the same God? Yes. All right, let's say a prayer. Good and gracious God, we ask that you help to show us the way to you. Help us to know how to believe in you and help us to trust in your presence in our lives, even when we're not sure if it's there. Help us to show your love and to live your love this day and always. Amen. All right, so you guys can take your, oops, take your maps, take a clipboard, and head on back. We'll give you that one. Excellent. Would you please pray with me? Good and gracious God. We ask that you breathe your spirit into and among us so that we don't just hear words with our ears, but hear in our hearts the message you have for us this day. Amen. So normally we follow something called the lectionary. Has anyone heard of this? So the lectionary is a common set of readings that's used across multiple denominations, and then the lectionary rotates between three sets of scripture readings. So we've got year A, year B, year C, and then each year has its own sets of stories. Uh, and we then keep cycling through these three years time and time again. However, each time there's just a few texts that we see every single year. Today's gospel is one of them. Now, I don't know the exact reason why the powers that be who made the lectionary in whatever year chose to include this one every year, but I have my theories. I think they chose to include the story of Thomas partially because this story is really the culmination of the entire Gospel of John. Yes, there is another chapter after this that serves as kind of a, a denouement from the resurrection a way to wrap up what has been written. But in this story, we hear the entire reason that the Gospel of John exists. And I also think we hear it every year because really, it's just a continuation from last week, for, from Easter, for those of you who might have already forgotten that Easter was just a week ago. This story happens on the day of the resurrection. When they say on that day, the first day of the week, that was the Easter Sunday, that was the day of resurrection. And so the women had just seen the risen Lord. They had just ran to tell the disciples, and now here we are. They knew Jesus had risen, but they had not yet seen him for themselves. And so I wonder if the disciples had their own doubts about what the women told them. I wonder if they were hiding not only for fear of persecution by the same people who had put Jesus to death, but also hiding because they knew that they had abandoned Jesus and their ministry, and they were afraid of what retribution they might face from the risen Lord. But then Jesus comes into the room and his first words are, Peace be with you. And they rejoiced. They rejoiced at the risen Lord and I imagine they rejoiced at his words of peace. But, as we infamously know, Thomas was not there. He did not get the same experience as all the other disciples. All the other disciples got to literally see Jesus. They got to hear his words of greeting and peace. They got to touch his body. Thomas did not. He only heard about the risen Lord from the other disciples, who were apparently still hiding in the same room as before. So it only seems fair that he would want the same experience, the same encounter with the risen Lord that the other disciples had. After all, the disciples 
don't seem like they were exactly transformed by their encounter with the risen Lord. They were still in the same room they had been in before. And I mean, if I'm being totally honest, me too. It would make faith a whole lot easier if I could literally see Jesus. If I could see the wounds on his hands and feet. If I didn't have to rely on what other people say, but I could get it straight from the horse's mouth, so to speak. That would be a lot easier. But Jesus didn't expect Thomas to rely on only the words of the disciples. Jesus seems to know that Thomas needs his own encounter with the risen Lord. And so Jesus meets Thomas where he is. He shows himself to Thomas and invites him to touch the wounds. Now, it never actually says that Thomas touches them. Instead, Thomas cries out, My Lord and my God. Fun fact, this is the only time in the entire book of John that Jesus is explicitly called my God. Is by this guy named Thomas who so often gets called Doubting Thomas. Thomas is the only person to see Jesus and say, My God. So I don't think Thomas was doubting Jesus. I think Thomas was doubting what the disciples had told him. Like the other disciples probably had their own doubts about what the women had told them about the risen Christ. And then, as we keep reading a little further in this gospel story, Jesus breaks that fourth wall a little. You know, like, in, and shows, like, the office where the characters are interacting with each other, and then all of a sudden they turn and face the camera, and they directly interact with the audience. Like that. Jesus turns to us and calls us to belief, despite the fact that we don't get to physically, literally, see the risen body of Christ. As Jesus says, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. In fact, this, this sentence, is the entire point of the Gospel of John. John even directly tells us that this is the point of the entire book of John. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these... All those stories we read through Lent, the woman at the well, the healing of the blind man, the raising of Lazarus, these are written so that you, aka we, may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you, we, may have life in his name. So how is it that you came to believe? Now, us Lutherans don't often talk about things like that. We don't talk about the moment we suddenly believed. But how is it that you came to believe? Maybe you can point to a specific moment when it all became clear to you. A specific moment when you felt like you could look and say, Jesus, my Lord and my God. Or maybe... It has taken months or even years of slowly coming to believe in Jesus as God. Or maybe, if you were raised in the church, you never actually questioned it, and the belief has just always been a part of you. Maybe there was a time when you felt like you met Jesus. Maybe there were times when you felt like you encountered God in some other way, through a faith community, through nature, through a sense of peace and healing, through the mission and ministry of the church, through the love and care we receive when we need it most. Or maybe, maybe you're not sure, and you're still waiting for the confidence of Thomas as he cries out, my Lord and my God. Maybe there have been times when you struggled with your faith and belief. What has it been like for you to come to belief? Or what is it like as you journey towards belief? What makes or would make you ready to proclaim Jesus as my Lord and my God with Thomas? Much as I would love 
to be in the exact shoes as Thomas and be able to literally and physically see the body of the risen Christ. That's not where we see Jesus right now. We are told he will come again one day. But our belief is through things like the scripture. The book of John was written so that we may come to believe in Jesus as God. And so we gather to hear these stories and to think on these words and to reflect on all the ways that we encounter God in our own ways and in our own lives. Now, just like I had the kids drawing those maps, each of our faith journeys looks a little different. Thomas looked different than the other disciples. The women looked different than the other disciples. And we each looked at our, our own faith journeys will look different from each other's. But at the end of the day, it is the same Jesus. It is the same God who is calling out to us saying, peace be with you. See the wounds on my hands. See the way that I have suffered humanity with and for you. And see the way that I have risen to new life and invite you into that new life through the waters of baptism. See the way that I come to you in the forgiveness that is tasted in the bread and wine at the table. How is it that you came or are coming to believe? Regardless of how you feel like answering that question today, maybe you're not even sure you want to answer that question today, know this. Jesus is calling out to you with a word of greeting, a word of peace. Jesus comes to us in the words of Scripture so that we who have not seen the literal physical body of the risen Lord may come to belief. And as we come to belief in Jesus as Lord and God, we will be blessed. We will know a peace which surpasses all human understanding. And we will have abundant, everlasting life in his name. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from life, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. 
he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. United in the hope and joy of resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of rebirth, the good news of your resurrection brings refreshment to a weary world. Following the women at the tomb, empower us to boldly share your radical love through our words and our works. Hear us, O God. As you breathed your spirit into the disciples, breathe your spirit of healing upon all creation. Nourish the earth with sufficient rains. Strengthen us to counter the effects of pollution and destruction. Hear us, O God. You prepared the disciples for their ministry by calming their fears and granting them your peace. Equip our community's leaders. Give them a spirit of peace and hearts that burn for justice, that their leadership reflects your love. Hear us, O God. You come among us in unexpected ways. Send us to those who hide in fear or question your love. Be a healing presence for any isolated by addiction, incarceration, mental illness, chronic pain, sickness, or grief, especially Jeff, Bob, Marcia, Geneva, Cherry, Winnie, Chuck, Henry, Harry, Roy, Ellen, Ruth, Sally, Karen, Katie, Larry, Debbie, those on our prayer list, and all whom we remember aloud or in our hearts. Hear us, O God. As you met the disciples after your resurrection, show us your presence among us. Bless our doubts and questions. Provide trusting and safe relationships for all ages to nurture our connection to you and one another. Hear us, O God. Resurrecting God, you bring us to new life every day. Thank you for blessing us with companions on our faith journey, especially those who now rest in your love. Strengthen us with the eternal peace of your promises. Hear us, O God. God, you hear our prayers with a compassionate heart. We ask that you now hear the prayers we lift up to you this day. Prayers for Valerie to have a quick recovery from her sickness. Prayers for Sharon, for health and strength in this time of struggle. Prayers for Debbie dealing with addiction. Guide her and help her with her sobriety. For Jim, for the Watson family on the death of Les. For Wade undergoing surgery on Tuesday. For the healing of Pascal. For Tom as he deals with stage four COPD. And for Joanne. We offer to you the prayers that we do not yet dare to speak, but we know that you hear, trusting in your abundant and ever-present mercy. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share Christ's peace with one another.
Let us pray. Generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God, and great is your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, that whoever believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Having come into the world, he fulfilled for us your holy will and accomplished our salvation. And so to explain God's love, to show it and to share it, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his good command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and his promise to come again. We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. And we ask you to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, that we and all who share in the body and blood of your Son may be filled with heavenly peace and joy, and receiving the forgiveness of, forgiveness of sin, may be made holy and have our place with all your saints. All blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Jesus Christ, by your Spirit, in your church, without end. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Come, for all is now ready.
Excuse me. Please stand as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you in grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word in this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And may the God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.